You were born in Laos in 1944. Um, right. Do you do you remember the French in Laos? I I remember the French. I saw them, you know, in Laos. I saw them. Yeah. And did you go to school in French? Did you learn French in Laos? I learned French in Laos uh, from uh, first grade to high school. Yeah. In first grade, I start. I started learning French, and then until I French in Laos. You know, I think in the morning. I learned French in the afternoon. I learned Lao. Oh, okay. In at fourth grade, I learned French. You know, we don't have Lao language in class mm. anymore. When the so, when the French were there. Yes, and then when I go to high school, we learn totally French, and then Lao is like a second language, like English. English and Lao are the second language for us, for me that time. Wow. And where did you learn English? I learned English uh, in my hometown. That's the Sawanakit, central part of Lao. Okay. And, and how, yeah. how old were you when you began learning English? That's uh, about 11, 11 years old. What are the earliest memories you have of war in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos? I really was, you know, a boy, a little boy. I I heard my father, who was a uh, French legion, I mean... Uh, we could buy the friends, and then he talked to me about uh, World War Two because yeah. he fought the Japanese. Oh wow! So your father fought the Japanese during World War Two. That's that's correct. And then he was among the two Lao soldiers who went to France with two Vietnamese and two Cambodian to get a training in France. Oh. So your father fought for the French, with the French Legion? Yes. Now, did your father fight alongside with the French? Yeah, that's correct. And who, who did he fight with the French? Was he in Vietnam fighting the Viet Minh? I think in... In Laos, in in Laos, maybe. Okay. Because because uh, the Japanese, uh, you know, went to Laos too. Oh. Oh, so your dad was fighting with the French against the Japanese in Laos. Yes. Wow. I I learned that time that uh, the Thai army. Joined the Japanese and went to Laos too. The Thai, you know. Yeah, the the Thai, the Thai. There are also Thais fighting the Japanese. The Thai fighting with the Japanese at that time. That's my, you know, my father and all the elders say that. Oh, oh. So, oh. So, did your did your father also fight against some Thai soldiers also? Yes, because they they were Thai soldiers uh, who who came. Yeah. With the Japanese, they. Yeah. What memories do you have of the war in Vietnam? The war in Vietnam, you mean from 1961 to 1975? Yes, uh-huh. Oh, I think uh, my brother, you know, who still work with the French, and fought in Dien Bien Phu in oh. 1954. Wow. Wow. Your, your brother fought at Dien Bien Phu? 
Yes. Oh boy, and he he fought with the French. Yes, that's correct. Was he captured? No, he fought and then he he retreat. He you know from there went to you know uh -huh. he was not captured. He retreated it and he told me that uh, there were German soldiers too. Yeah. Yeah, you said that. The, yeah, that there there were Germans fighting with. There were actually, I think, a lot of Germans fighting with the French in Vietnam. Yes, he said that those are prisoners of war, huh. and then they are the bravest one <laughs> during that Indian been full battle. Wow, the Germans were, huh? Yes. Now you you were a colonel in the um, army of Laos, right? Friendly, I I was lieutenant colonel of the Royal Lao Army. Okay. But I I was full colonel by the CIA because I worked with the CIA for six years, and then they promote me as a young, brave person. Oh wow. When when did you go? When did you join the Army of Laos? I was recruited. Uh, I think uh, January uh, seventeen, nineteen sixty one. Nineteen sixty one. To go to the military academy in Vien Chan Lao as a cadet. And and when did you see? When did you experience combat for the first time? I, when I was commissioned to officer, you know, after my training, uh -huh. I joined the 1st Airborne Battalion and sent to northern part of Laos mm -hmm. to, to stop the North Vietnamese uh, intervention to Long Nam Tha. Yeah. Province and to cut the to stop the Chinese invasion to Lao on route number one from China to Lao. Oh wow! So China also sent troops into Lao. Yes, because I fought with them. Oh God! I fought, I fought with them. I fought the Vietnamese and I fought the Chinese too. So I learned, <laughs> I learned from my experience wow. from both army. Which soldier was tougher? Um, was it the Chinese soldier or the Vietnamese soldier? I think uh, the probably almost equal, but the, the Vietnamese, not Vietnamese, communist, uh, better, uh, tougher. The Vietnamese uh, were. Yeah. Wow. So, why did you fight the Chinese and the Vietnamese? Was it because they invaded Laos, or was it because they were communists, or for both reasons? Uh, we fought primarily with the not Vietnamese communists, but China, I think, at that time they they wanted to help the Party Lao, the Lao communists. Mm. To take over Laos, I think, because they are both communists. Yeah, and so they they wanted. Okay, so they are China and North Vietnam are helping the communists in Laos. Yes, that's correct. Do you remember when you experienced um, what year you experienced battle for the first time? May nineteen sixty two. May. I think. Wow. And that was against the Vietnamese? The Vietnamese and the Chinese. And the Chinese in May 62. And when did you first begin to work with the Americans? Uh, back in 19... I think... Uh, 
1967. Yes, I, I think uh, on January I trained uh, the Commando Raider, uh -huh. uh, uh, recruited by the CIA, and I trained him to to jump for the jump training, you know, to get the wings. And then after graduation, and then the CIA attend the graduation, and then they meet me, they, they saw me, and I was the person that time who who speak English, who, you know, mm -hmm. I just finished my training from, you know, America for my one year training. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, they like me to be interpreter, and they see that I am a qualified officer, young officer. So they asked me to join the CIA, that uh, I think uh, seven. March 1967, I think. Wow. And how many years did you work with the CIA? For six years. For six years. Wow. And what kind of work did you do with the CIA? I think they, they used me as interpreter first, and then they want me to train uh, heavy weapons, you know, because uh, when I trained in America, I have the highest grade for firing the heavy weapons, you know. Yeah. And then I work as intelligence officer, that's the S2, and operational officer, that's the S3. You know, I help the CIA, you know, send the commando radar, the road watch team, Mm -hmm. and the intelligence team to the Ho Chi Minh Trail and then extract them back from Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yeah. yeah, so I was going to ask you about the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So you you worked to try to shut down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yeah, that's correct. That's the first mission when I was interpreter with the CIA case officer in Sawanake, that's a military region tree. You know, they they asked me to insert the man and extract the man and resupply and do the report. Whatever happening in military region tree, they depend on me because, you know, I work maybe, you know, the whole day no weekend, yeah. and then make sure that everything in military region three uh, is going properly and keep the secret of what happening in military region three. Oh, so you have to keep everything secret. Yes, because when 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 there are you know some news people who came to my area. Mm. I have to go out and say something to to scare them, to to have them get out of a uh, mm. <laughs> Samanakate province. Yeah. So I, Did you ever, you saw the Ho Chi Minh Trail? Yes, I saw by myself, you know. What, what kinds of things did you see on the Ho Chi Minh Trail? On the Ho Chi Minh Trail, uh, mm. at you know, they've been a road, you know, from North Vietnam. I work over there and then uh, try to, you know, try to do something like uh, at night we drop some, something, fire cracker and some uh, hand grenade uh -huh. down to Ho Chi Minh Trail. And scare the North Vietnamese, you know, at night. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, so much effort went into trying to shut down the Ho Chi Minh Trail, but it never really was shut down. Why was the Ho Chi Minh Trail so impossible to shut down? I think the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail is the main and only one sub supply uh, route from North Vietnam to South Vietnam, you know, so 
there are so many North Vietnamese guard, you know, to protect the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Oh. There were about 62,000 North Vietnamese, you know. They are road builder, they build the road and then protect the trail. Yeah. Do you believe, you know, after the Vietnam War, um, a lot of people believed that American prisoners remained in Vietnam and Laos. Do you, do you believe some American prisoners remained in Laos after the war? I think so. Yeah, why, why, do, why do you think that? I, I, I heard that. You know, when I work with the CIA, you know, I heard that uh, there are many American pilots shut down, yeah. you know, in Laos, and then they were captured, and many were killed. Because I, when I do the intelligence from the people from uh, communist liberated area, they said, oh, they killed you know, American soldier, you know. Oh, they killed them when they were prisoners. Yes, because they, when, when the party Lao, that's the Lao communists, you yeah. know, capture the American pilot. Yeah. They kill them. They don't want to give them food. No food to give to them. Mm. But if the North Vietnamese army, you know, captured the American pilot, so they give them food, they protect them. I think the North Vietnamese no, you know, law, you know, international law, mm. better than the Pathet Lao. So the Pathet Lao was, you think the Pathet Lao was more brutal than the North Vietnamese? Yes, that's correct. Oh. Why do you think um, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos all became communists because there's such a big effort to prevent them from becoming communists but they they do become communists why why do you think the communists won i think uh, back that time you know lao government do not want lao to enter to the war and they want to be neutral mm. you know and mm -hmm. also cambodia yeah. But, you know, but the American government want to use both country, both uh, soldiers of the two countries to stop, you know, the supply line that Ho Chi Minh Trail, and then they recruit the Lao to do it. But I think the non Vietnamese are very strong. And they believe the mm. whatever communist communism. They are very strong, and then you know, compare. I mean, compare to the Lao or Cambodian. I don't yeah. want to blame my own people. If I compare, you know, right? Because the the communist Vietnam, they try to reunite the country and became a medium. Powerful country, you know, not yeah. a really uh, big power right. country, but medium. So they are afraid of the Chinese to come back, and they want to, you know, chase the French um, or then later the American to get away from right. the country to, from you know China. Right. So it sounds like you're saying that American entry into Laos and Cambodia to shut down the Ho Chi Minh Trail, that encouraged more North Vietnamese to come into Laos and Cambodia. Is that is that what you're saying? I think they, they, they have to use that Ho Chi Minh Trail. There is no choice. Yeah. They used to use, you know, to, to send troops or supply to Cambodia first using the sea, you know, using the sea. Yeah. And then the seventh fleet of the Americans stopped, you know, 
yeah. them to to use the sea to resupply something to Cambodia to see a new wheel. Yeah. And then they have no choice. They have to. Uh, they have to come to Laos and use the Lao land. I see. I I was wounded first time when I fought the Vietnamese in North Vietnam. You know, uh, I became company commander and then. I fought the North Vietnamese, and then I find out that one of my company was killed. They come to me. They they want to kill me. They said, oh, kill him. They said, in Vietnamese, ban chê đi, ban chê đi, kill him. But I was very fortunate. They hit only my arm, and then they stopped shooting at me. Five of them put shoot at me. Second time, I was wounded when I helped. Middle Middle region too. When Kuki at nineteen sixty nine, my battalion was sent to stop uh, round number ten from North Vietnam that go to the plain of Cha. Mm. I was wounded by hand grenade and I was almost die. I arrived at the hospital and then I feel like uh, the blood almost gone. And then the doctor, American doctor, come and pick me up and, and he said that oh he think uh, he was really lucky to get to the hospital and on time they gave me blood and then I went to Udon they sent me to Udon for three months because I have broke a leg the fragment going to my eye the whole body um, three months you know so and I think you were and and you still have fragments from that grenade in your body now? Yes, I have some now. So I have the fragment, and I when I walk, I sling. Now I cannot walk too far anymore. And you know, when talking about the war, I cry. When I talk about the war, when I write about the story, I cry. You know, and I stop. I cannot see. And sometimes I don't remember how to write one sentence of English because you know I lost my memory. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of problem, hard problem. I blow up many tanks, blow up many, you know, supply route, kill at least five thousand North Vietnamese. I lost myself about one thousand uh, of my men, two thousand wounded, and couple hundred missing. So I did lot of job, you know. I work so hard. I kill the enemy by myself, by my finger. I was a sniper. I shoot one on one, one draw, and kill one North Vietnamese right on the head. You know, but now I feel like, uh, you know, I'm nothing. I feel mm. like they forget us. Well, we're not going to forget you. Did Did you say that you were captured by the North Vietnamese? Yes, but they're not Vietnamese. Uh, but you were able to escape? Yes, after three months, they, I was wounded and they tied me for 15 days. And then, you know, and they, 10 years ago, I can show my the trace of the telephone wire around my hand to American Legion. And then uh, people know that... Uh, you know, they see my hand, they see whatever. My left hand cannot work properly because, you know, it goes through my arm and a couple of my fingers cannot work properly. And I say that, you know, they, they, you know, they don't treat me. They don't put anything on my hand. and They, they don't give enough food. So, you know, they, you know. The, the, the North Vietnamese did not give you food? Yes, and then they don't put uh, the medicine on my arm. Oh. So I wear one, and then about 15 days, they allow me to, you know, they take out the telephone wire and then allow me to go take a bath and I have to clean my shirt because a lot of blood, you know, and then I, you know, I am so wise, but I work very hard. Yeah. Nobody, nobody fought like me. So you, you, know? you, you were a prisoner of the North Vietnamese for three months. Three months. They tortured me. They asked me to go to work Two before months. I get food. They, they, they say, the North Vietnamese tortured you. 
Yes, they, when they come to me, they hit me with the the stock of the AK-47. You know, they said, you are a puppet, you are a stupid person. And then they asked me, what rank are you? I said, I'm a private. I was young that time, only 18. Mm. I was private. And then I remember what they talk in Vietnamese. If you don't work, you have no food. If you try to escape, I will kill you. I know that because they repeat. Uh, and they put me in jail. That's not really jail, but uh, the stable that they raised the they raised the horse. <laughs> wow. And a lot of mosquito in the horse <laughs> at night. You know, I have a I have a big li- uh, I have a really bad life. But you remember, uh, but I was a smart officer. You know. From La Military Academy, from friends, I am like a French officer. Yeah. When I trained with the American officer, my grade was high like an American officer. You said you were a sniper? Yes, I learned to be a sniper from American. I have the picture with him and he, he's the person who who worked with me to send it to Mao and he teach me sniper and then he teach uh, Lao Zodio to become a sniper, and I would translate him, you know. How, and how long did you serve as a sniper? I think I, I learned two weeks, and I teach two weeks, and then I did not go to be a sniper, but when there is a fighting, you know, even I was a regiment commander, I was on the front line. I was the person who shoot because I want to see, to let my people say that, you know, I was the brave person. Every round I fire, kill one not with me. Wow. Do you have any idea how many North Vietnamese you, you shot as a sniper? I think you were out 10. Around 10. Wow. What is your strongest memory of the war in Laos? I think that uh, when I fought the North Vietnamese, yeah. they are very brave. Mm. They know how to fight, even they don't eat. And even if the number is very really low, they send them surrender. Mm. No, when I when I fought, my regiment fought with them. So in southern part of Laos, so one on one, I kill, we kill around one thousand eight hundred North Vietnamese, and I lost seven hundred and fifty. You know, on my part. When did you come to the United States? I came to the United States in 1990, early 1990. Now, when the the war ended in Vietnam in 1975, what? Where did you go? What happened to you? And because Lao from a coalition government, you know, with the communists. Yeah. And the Lao government. Uh, Ask us to lay down the weapon and become and try to work together. But in fact, you know, the communists, they try to take us, all of the officer, to go to the re-education camp. That's what they said. Mm. They want us to learn how to work with the communists, become a new country. And then that the fact was that they, they want to capture us and then, you know, get us away from the government, and, you know. And and did they capture you? They, they just order from, not really capture, but the government and the communists, when they form a new government, they say, you have to go, that's the order from the government, and the order from... The communist board, we have to listen because we, we are uh, soldiers, you know. We right. have to listen to the government. And and so you 
you went to a re-education camp? Yes. How how but long I, were you how long were you there? I think for uh, twelve years. Twelve years. Yes. Twelve years. Yes. What what did you do in those twelve years? Oh, I I went to the hard work. Oh God! After one month, we go to the re-education camp. They said this is not a ready re-education camp. This is a prisoner, a prison mm. for those who who were you know, the lucky, the servant, the poor pet, so they of the American. Mm. You you are prisoner of war. So you have nothing now. You have to listen to us and work hard, and you know, and listen to them. You know. Did they did and, they did they torture you? I think after the war, no. No. But they 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 ask us to do a lot of things, and they say something bad to us, and when we have to learn to to say that we made mistake, we are poor pet. Two pet soldiers of the American, we yeah. are servants and whatever, we destroy laws and then we are bad guys. You have to be, you know, punished. You have to pay. So that's 12 years. 12 years of hard labor. Yes. When you got out of the prison, um, what, what did you do? You know, I I stay home and then help my wife, you know, working and sell something at the market until we get, we, I was broke, you know, I have no money. Yeah. And I have to, you know, work with my wife in yeah. helping her sell something at the market. Did you... Regret working with the Americans, working with the CIA? Did you look back and think, well, I, I should not have done that? It seems that, uh, it seems that uh, at the time when I worked with the CIA, and I think I did the right thing. Yeah. I was loyal to the Lao government, mm. and then... I was loyal to the American who paid me. Yeah. You know, and I was very really proud of myself, of my work. Yeah. Until recently, I feel that uh, we were forgotten mm. by the American government. I mean, they don't treat us, uh, they don't recognize us uh, as a real freedom fighter for them, you know. We, we feel a little, a little bit disappointed. They do not know who who fought in Laos, who are the best soldiers in Laos. You oh. know, they just... I am working, you know, to make sure that uh, Congress and people understand that uh, we were the person, we, the Laos lowland, like us from my point. Uh -huh. You know, are the best soldiers and are well trained. You know, and most of the officers who work with the CIA, or they they receive the training here in America. They fought like American. Did you come to the U.S. as a refugee or as an immigrant? And no, as an immigrant, as because an immigrant. you know, at that time, uh, the American embassy in Laos. They still remember me, you know, because mm. uh, you, I was very well known at that time because I worked with the CIA yeah. and fought in many battlefields. When mm. they see an uh, important battlefield, they say, how you go? Because I was very young and very brave, and I, I went many places. The American people know that I was the strongest regiment commander in Laos.